Ways of seeing. It seems very straightforward that we look, notice, and see things, compile memories, have visual references. But there are different, there are different ways of seeing. And through our life experiences, we develop um, perspectives and, and focus, and we can bring particular feelings to what we're seeing. Like, why do some images stay in our mind while others just drift off and, and vanish? I've been thinking about this. And I've, just in the last few days, I've had three separate experiences related to the art of seeing. I was in Fort Langley with my two sisters, a favorite place of ours over decades. We've been meeting there, going for walks along the river, um, lunch in a little restaurant, cafe, coffee shop. My sisters like to uh, check out the stores. They might buy something. They, don't, they just like to go into stores and wander around and look at things. And I'd rather wait outside, find a bench to sit and watch the passers-by, listen to the crows. Uh, well, they can do their shopping. And so this is what we did the other day. And I really enjoying just the, the place and the time. And I, I looked over to the store where my sisters had gone into, and, and now they're there. They were out on the sidewalk. And I saw them outlined against the background of the street. Off in the distance, there's the river and trees. There's other people. So I could see everything around them. But they somehow were in, it, in their own space. They'd created their own space within that scene. Or I'd created that because... They were what they were. They were sharing a bag of chocolate-covered jujubes. It was their favorite treat, and they were both. One sister was holding the bag. The other one was, you know, um, putting her hand in. And they were just very animated in conversation, really enjoying these chocolate-covered jujubes and their engagement with each other. The 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 cheerfulness. And, and of the conversation and just just how absorbed and connected they were with each other with this bag of candy they could have been you know three years old and five years old or nine years old and I think there's three years difference between them three years old nine years old and ten years old like and here they are we're all in our 60s it's with that same energetic that same connection and enjoyment and uh, timelessness. For me, that image is an image of, of timelessness. That they're sort of the essence of, of who they are, for me, has nothing to do with the decades that passing. Um, it's interesting how you can get to know some people over your whole life and there's that relationship that's just always there. And it was so much fun that, that they were enjoying this bag of candy together. Uh, and that is a really nice way to think of them and to appreciate and to see them. For me, I thought that was, uh, so it was, in a way it was seeing with my heart, I think, seeing with a different part of myself that actually created this tableau. Like visually I could see their shapes and who they were as very sharp and clearly defined against the background. They were like stamped onto that background in a timeless way. Then another experience I had, which is also related to seeing, like really seeing clearly, has to do with a student that I teach in Kobodo. 
that's the weapons um, art in karate. And this student, he's a very sweet boy, 12 years old, and very eager to do the weapons. He, he, he likes to talk pretty well nonstop and, you know, has ideas, bubbling over with ideas and talking like, does everything very quickly. Uh, and very eager, fast, quick, talking, a partic you know, that particular kind of personality. And I determined that before this class that I would kind of shift my focus to look for what he was doing right and expect that, that I would learn from him as well and that I would really um, find out those things, notice what he was doing correctly. And as we got into the class and, you know, he was just being his normal, normal behavior. And I could, there was that impulse on my part immediately to kind of be like a little bit of irritation or like, oh, just, you know, but instead, no, I decided I was going to shift my focus, which I did. And the curious thing to me is, is as I decided to look for what he was doing right and practice it correctly, it seemed to transform his practice into doing everything correctly. <sighs> oh, I was, I was stunned that why had I thought he, he was doing so many things wrong? Like, why had I been frustrated here? He, he knows everything. He's doing everything, probably 70 to 80 percent good, which is pretty good for that level. And, you know, I was preparing for a belt test. So, you know, I was feeling a little picky, but having decided to change that, you know, looking for what he was doing right, oh, I could suddenly see that I mean, was it me seeing him doing things right, or had he always been doing it? I don't know, but but uh, I, there was quite there was a big sense of relief, you knowing, oh yeah, he is, he is good, he will be ready for his bell test, oh, yay. And, and here's another thing that went along with that, it wasn't just uh, what I was seeing, it was when I looked at him and talked to him, I was actually able to look him genuinely and, and make some kind of connection with him that, yeah, you're doing really good. You're doing really well. Good job. And I know I've said those words before, but I, I maybe, I don't know whether I actually really totally meant them before, <laughs> but I, I could tell there seemed like there was just a little bit more like actual connection. So there is a difference I know between, I, I, I see now the difference between saying things like that, like good job. Oh, well, you're doing good between saying them because you think you should say them and saying them and really meaning them. It's a completely different feeling. And I, and I sort of, I felt like, oh yeah, he got that appreciation that there was a bit of a bond there. Wow. Um, so that was a, a second time of a different way of seeing the particular focus that produced this very um, tangible result for me. Hey, then the third, the third experience. It was on the same day when I was going into town to see my sisters. There was a, I noticed a woman waiting to get on the ferry and dressed. I thought, hmm, kind of nerdy or geeky. Um, but she seemed pretty happy with herself. But it was a, it was a little odd, the color combinations, the, the pants, the styles, the, the hats, little, little ears poking out of it. And then when I walked in behind her, I saw that she had the most beautifully manicured fingernails. And I recognized those fingernails. And it was a woman who uh, used to work for us years ago. I hadn't recognized really who she was because her hat was sort of pulled down low over her head. But I, I knew who she was. And then I recognized, oh, that look, that's like chic. It's like geeky chic. For sure. Anyway, she started showing me pictures of her dog on her phone. She was like, Oh, I just love my dog. I just love my dog. And I'm, well, where is he? I'm thinking if she's looking at pictures of her dog, is, is he way off somewhere and, and she's missing him? And, oh, no, he's at home. I left him at home. But I just love looking at pictures of him. Oh, you know how it is with dogs. 
you know, the love just keeps going up like that. And she's talking on and on about, um, oh, I just love him so much. And her, over her enthusiasm for her, for the dog. Um, and when I look at the, the, the phone, you know, it was a cute little kind of scruffy brown dog. She just was like, she could talk and talk and about how much she loved this dog, her dog. And, and, and I remembered when I was uh, looking, when we had my daughter's cat with us, and I could just look at that cat forever. Everything about the cat delighted me. Everything, the way she moved, the way she slept, the way she looked out the window, the way she pounced, the way she climbed up, the way she just was so serene and regal, the way she would chase after things, the way it was like object of pure delight. And the longer that she stayed with us, the more I loved her. This, uh, there's so much about love. There's so much about our nature, about our being, about who we are, how we interact with each other, how we interact with animals that we don't know. We, we don't understand. We, we uh, think, oh, there's these various rules and social protocol and things that we follow to, you know, have successful lives and good relationships, but really, there's there's a, a part of ourselves that really knows all of that and understands how to connect with people, how to really feel that joyous delight, that appreciation. And these are that's natural. This is natural for us. And whatever age that we are, um, we get better at it. And this I think is connected to the art of seeing. How do we look at things? How do we look at people? And how do we look at ourselves? Thank you. Well, huh. every week there's some beautiful insight that you yeah, share with us. Yeah, for sure, so for sure. Interesting. Amazing. Yes. How long have you been thinking about that? Oh, uh, uh, last night. Uh-huh. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. You put it together. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I, I love the visual tableau of your sisters. The way yes, you... yes, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's and, very cute. Um, listen, and and the mystery of of the little boy. Was he always good, or was it just your new perception and looking for it? Yeah, yeah. And then at yeah. the end, um, just the idea that you can just focus on something so sweet and precious and can't get enough of it. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's exactly right. Can't, can't get enough of it. Yeah, very, it's very interesting, isn't it? It is. It is. Yeah. And I guess um, part of it would be you raised our awareness. It it adds it adds quality to our lives to think about that. Yeah, for sure. Well, I'm beginning to think that so much of of what does add quality to our life is in the details, is in discriminating is seeing more clearly, is perceiving that because we are creative beings that we don't just want like a cartoon or a standard image or like even in, when it comes to our feelings, there's so many levels and gradations and, and, and ways of, of being inside of ourselves that we, we sort of can cultivate and decide about like we're meant to keep on evolving, you know, and understanding and just really, and then there's so many different ways of enjoying, like, like, you know, you distinguish between different kinds of candies that you like. My sister's like those chocolate covered jujubes, <laughs> whereas someone else might like licorice or someone else, like everything is a different flavor, right? Different flavors, different flavors. How many different shades of green there are in the garden? How many different birds? Like everything about the, our, the universe and the world and life that we're in. It's about diversity. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Good point. Right? Everything is like just in, in details and noticing and we details. Miss so much by being so busy and preoccupied. Yeah. Or, and yeah, and not even, yes. Yeah, that could, that could be it, huh? But I have a question. Yeah. Um, for you personally, are you beginning to see things from a camera eye or is this a heart? Oh, that's a really good question. I think that the two uh, play off each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because in order to really 
what I'm noticing now is that I'm starting to do videos. And now when I watch videos and plays or things, you know, that other people do, it's the other, I notice that certain, I'm noticing now how scenes are set up and I notice more components of what makes something, give something some emotional impact because that's, that we do respond emotionally to certain, you know, certain light mm -hmm. really affects our emotions and our feelings, you know, and our appreciation. So now I'm, I'm noticing that. So then I, I notice it in course. I notice it in this. So you're you're just way. expanding and cultivating. That. It's it, yeah, this is a creative. It's being sort of, I think it's being true to our creative self that that is actually our being like that we are, meant to create and then and in order to create and as an art too right and as an art and, and it ties in with karate of course uh, the whole idea of practice and an art and creating and details and fine-tuning it, it keeps us engaged with the process of our being you know as opposed to you know just what are what are the criterions of success assigned to people at our age group and uh, a lot of it is going traveling. Yes. But all that stress of getting ready for a trip and these days with COVID, where you could just do what you're describing and have such a rich. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. And we all find it in this. It really helps to think in terms of what do I like what do I particularly really deeply enjoy? What do I really like? What do I not, you know, like to just notice those differences between when I'm really having a good time, this is really feeling good, and between, when, oh, I don't know about that. You know, because we have spent a lot of time probably forcing ourselves to do things that were considered, you know, beneficial or important. 